How to paint a tomato in watercolors with shiny areas, pigment lifting, building rich colors, and creating 3D look. An outline drawing is done which is available for download. With an elastic eraser I'm removing the excess amount of graphite from the paper. We don't need those extra graphite marks in watercolor painting, especially in the finished result. Those graphite marks can be really disturbing. This is the size of the tomato. Let's mix watercolors for this tomato. I have a real subject in front of me which is the best and looking for colors on the tomato. I can see a lot of yellow pigment. For that I'm taking lemon yellow and Indian yellow. Of course the main color of the tomato is red, for which I'm taking Senelia red. A little touch of alizarin crimson for some cooler color tones. The very closer to the shiny areas there is cool pigment, for which I'm using manganese violet very small amount, transparent amount of manganese violet mixed together with a small amount of senelier red. And the darker areas on the shadow and in those folds I'm using pearl and maroon with a little touch of senelier red. Adding Indian yellow to main color mix. Be sure that your water is clean after mixing watercolors. I have two glasses for painting. Now we can start painting. I will be painting each fold, each section of this tomato separately, adding clean water with round synthetic brush to your paper surface. Be sure that, to, that the area is moist, not the water isn't floating around, there are no puddles. Loading my brush with the main mix, which is Senelia Red, together with Indian Yellow and little touch of Alizarin Crimson, starting from the shadow area, which we can see in the reference, open reference right beside this tutorial or on the other gadget and zoom in the area that we are painting right now. Try to see those darker and lighter areas of each folded section. Applying manganese violet with Senelia Red, very transparent amount of manganese violet, to the lighter parts of these sections because they are facing the light source and they are much cooler than the ones are in the shadow area. And for the lighter area we need a little slightly cooler color tone and manganese violet helps here with this task perfectly. First layer is very loose, super transparent, nothing is like in the reference. The color, richness of the color is very transparent, very light. Now. I'm washing my brush, cleaning in paper towel and lifting the light parts of these sections. This is the lifting method done with a clean and dry brush while the surface of the painted area is slightly moist. And I'm lifting larger areas than they appear in the reference. Just because I know that after a few layers, after many layers, those lighter parts will become smaller and smaller and in order to keep the size of the light in the reference I need to make those lighter areas larger than they look in the reference. If I will leave only the area uh, the size which is in the reference I will finish with dark subject. So as you can see for these sections we have darker area, half tones and lighter area. Moving forward and as you can see from the shine on my surface the water amount is quite small 
just to cover the surface and for watercolors to be moved. Watercolors are not floating by themselves on their own on the surface of the paper. I am very easily can move watercolors with my round synthetic brush, but they are not floating by themselves. That's the ratio what you need to look for in water control. Applying watercolors, also studying reference all the time, looking how each of those folds are facing the light and they are each fold is separate separately and looks differently from one another because the form of the tomato is round and how the light source is affecting the surface of each fold is different we are not doing the same on all folds just assuming that light is coming from left and shadow is in on the right side no we really need to study uh, our reference to see how it all is working how the light is affecting the surface here the bottom part is slightly darker and the upper part is lighter maybe other fold is slightly different so we need to check each section in the reference smoothing the applied layer with clean and dry brush while the surface is wet slightly moist i can control everything what is happening on the surface but it's important for the first layer to paint it, paint it transparently we're just setting light and shadow contrast where it is placed placing color tones cools and warms moving to the next fold the technique is the same applying transparent layer of watercolors and lifting the light area full version of this first layer painting for this tomato i will share the link up above Speeding up the process of painting this tutorial, full length tutorial is available on my Patreon, link is down below. The tutorial is one hour long, it explains the whole process from the beginning till the finishing touches of painting this beautiful subject tomato.
painting further and now I'm reaching a finishing part of painting this tutorial, this tomato. It's an amazing subject, so nice to paint just with round synthetic brush, making those gradual transitions, smooth layers, an amazing practice. And still, this is the part, of course, where you can stop and call it done. It's already looking very realistic, very impressive. It will be a nice addition to any house or a nice present to your loved ones. This painting is really impressive by itself, but you can paint on. You can really push yourself a little bit for further, add more layers, more details. If you are doing this gradually, with transparent watercolors you can paint on and on build more realistic look more roundness to this notice which part is even more contrasty and darker but don't go too fast if you feel the urge to paint faster stop make a pause go for a walk uh, do some other things maybe start another painting but don't rush things this is the part where you need to really enjoy the process. You're almost finished, but you can paint on. Don't rush, don't hurry. We can easily destroy our work by rushing things up. After taking a break, you can come back refreshed with a fresh look and see where you can paint more. Or you can join a watercolor society, watercolor group uh, in Facebook or in other platform and ask for a fellow artist. Maybe they can suggest you what you can do more. And that is, uh, that is very good, that is completely normal to share and to ask for an opinion other fellow artists because you are looking at this painting, at this tutorial for, for some time and eyes are getting more used to what they see and they skip some details but when somebody else is looking uh, they can definitely see some things where you can paint more or maybe it's already great and you can finish thank you for being here thank you for watching this was an amazing practice an amazing tutorial i enjoyed it very much Hope you learned something new. I certainly did. <laughs> Thank you and see you in my next tutorials. Bye-bye.